Hello and welcome to the broom closet. Recently, it dawned on me I never formally learned how to do watercolor, so I'm going to try to follow some other YouTube tutorials. Some of my tools today are this Meaden palette. I have some new half pans in here with some new colors that we're going to try out. I love these removable pans because it makes it easier to organize all the colors how you like them. And you can tell that I prefer mixing on one side more than the other side. The other side feels like it has some kind of coating that's kind of hard to work on, so I tend to use just that one side. This Zig brand white marker I'll be using for the highlights, and this Peebo, Pebo masking fluid pen has been so perfect for all of my projects in the last couple of weeks. It has a super fine tip, and it has not gotten clogged once since I got it a couple weeks ago. Today's tutorial comes from Kellogg Sloops or Kellogg Sloops, and I'm going to heavily link this video. And uh, none of this is any of my design. This is the disclaimer. I am following directly from Kellogg Sloops' video. Now, what we're going to be doing, he has three different wave studies and different styles. He suggests starting with indigo, but my indigo is much darker than his, and I neglected to turn the camera on when I started. After the gradient, we're going to be putting on the white paint to give the illusion of foam. This pattern is so freaking hard, and I struggled a lot. I know practice makes perfect, and I don't do waves ever, really, so trying this new technique and this new pattern uh, of foam was really hard for me. If anyone has any advice of how to do this and make it look a little more cohesive, please let me know. Next is a more abstract wave style. This was really fun and a lot less pressure filled. And it was at this time I pull out my hair dryer for a little quicker dry time. I typically don't use the blow dryer. Um, I'm convinced the image just dries a little bit differently than it would just air drying even if you're holding the hair dryer up out of the way you know not blowing your colors around it still looks a little different i loved this blowing technique you load up your brush with a lot of water and a lot of the pigment and you could even use a straw to do this. I just used not a straw and you can see it went everywhere. I'm not a tidy artist, um, but I, I really liked how this turned out. Even my husband asked how I painted the little tendrils, which I did not. I just used my breath. And now I'm just adding some varying dot sizes and then I repeat the whole process, eventually getting darker and darker as you add the layers. When I noticed that the indigo was a little too dark, I started playing around with some Prussian blue and some phthalo blue. So in the end, I just have a mashup of all of those at some point. I don't have written down the recipe for any of this. So I hope just uh, the names of the colors will be useful. And have your own fun playing and mixing at some point. This last design is supposed to have like a sandy portion at the bottom and I started by using my masking fluid and adding little ovals to where I'd like the illusion of boats to be. So that's what I'm doing here. Again, I love this pen. I love it so much. I really like this design because using this watered down burnt sienna and transitioning it into like the phthalo blue is a very beautiful combination. And a trick that I found when trying to avoid a green mixture when you're combining these two colors is working from the outside and going in but stopping just before they meet, letting them settle down a little bit, and then just going in with clean straight water and go very slowly and in this case, you're always able to pick up any of the green mixture with a paper towel. It's 
so from the phthalo blue i think i threw in some cobalt at some point and then i went back to indigo uh, Kellogg Sloops uses specific blues, but I'm just working with what I had. This one consisted of lots of blow dry time. And he does suggest going over your colors more than once just to give them a little more depth, make them a little more richer. So that's what I'm doing here, and I've fast forwarded that just because I did the same process over using this gradient. There's me picking up some of the green that I accidentally mixed. I don't typically do oceans, so hence the practicing. I think they're stunning. I think people who are able to do them well are very talented. Um, so we're just gonna keep on practicing. Now he says we're gonna add some shadows under the boats. Some of my areas were still really wet, but I went for it anyway. Uh, as you can see, the shadow tended to just bleed away. And here we go again one more time using that foam technique from the first picture on the left that we did. I keep going back and forth between using the Zig pen, which didn't always have like a steady ink output, I guess would be the word. I guess you could call it that. And it was going between that and then emptying some of that onto the palette and just using a paintbrush. I am waiting for some white gouache to arrive in the mail, so we will give that a test later on. Kellogg Sloop's instruction was really good, and this tutorial easily makes it appear like you know what you're doing. You could even change up the color palette if you want to use different blues, use pinks, use reds, whatever you want. That's the beauty of painting. By the way, I was today years old when I saw that every other artist basically on YouTube, Instagram, was using washi tape instead of painter's tape. It works so well. If you saw my Practical Magic inspired watercolor last week, I'm sure you noticed that I struggled with that damn blue painter's tape. So 10 out of 10 recommend washi tape. Comes off super clean, easy. This was the first painting I tried with it and it was very visually appealing as well. Again, this tutorial came over from the Keylog Sloops channel. I am linking him and uh, carding his video up in the corner. So please go see that and give it a shot. He is amazing. His Instagram is outstanding. Keylog Sloops, please do not sue me for using this. I appreciate your tutorial and I'm going to keep practicing. Okay, thank you. Here comes the washi tape removal part. And that's the best part of the whole video. Okay, bye.